Hi, good afternoon. Um, hello, YouTube. This is an unusual live stream from me. When I do live streams, I'm normally doing them on my Instagram or Facebook Live, but I have been getting so many uh, questions on my YouTube video about my ghillie crafting that we're going to do videos about how I craft my videos that I thought rather than do the edit, I'm going to come on live, speak to you guys, um, show you the um, the, the techniques and the materials that I use to craft my ghillie suit from the basic suit to the webbing goggles. I'm going to go from pretty much top to bottom this afternoon showing you um, the leaf suits I use and perhaps what you can do to your leaf suits to um, to adapt them, how you can uh, garnish them with artificial vegetations, how you can attach natural vegetation, um, and how you can build build your own ghillie, ghillie suit. Now I can't to today build build your own ghillie, ghillie suit. Now I can't to today. I'm not going to be showing you um, perhaps the 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 art behind it. I'm going to show you the techniques that I use to apply the artificial vegetation and how I garnish my suits. Um, to talk about in depth about how to make the suits look pretty or how to match them to your terrain is another level. So I'm kind of considering this live stream as a, I guess, a, a basics in ghillie crafting. So um, for those of you who are joining, it's completely off the cuff, this one. I did not plan to do it. Been no promo for it at all. Um, but hi, hi guys. Welcome to a ghillie crafting live stream. Um, what I'm going to start with, because what everyone seems to ask about is the actual leaf suit. Now, personally, I don't think the leaf suit is the most important part. I actually think the, the the head, the hat, and the glasses are the most important part of the suit that you craft. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the leaf suits that I use first of all because this is probably the most common question. My favourite leaf suit is one of these. Now, this is a this is a Jack Pike leaf suit in English oak. There is one problem with these leaf suits. They don't make them anymore. Uh, to get hold of these suits is, is hard. This is an old Jack Pike suit. They, there are some newer ones which are available on eBay. If you search Jack Pike, English Oak, uh, Leaf Suit, or LLCS, you'll see them on eBay. Beware, if you're buying them new, they are not exactly the same color as this one here. This is new old stock. They stopped making these a couple of years ago. The new ones have a slightly different color. They're darker. Um, they're fine for in the depths of winter, but perhaps early autumn, like the season we're getting coming up now, or in the summertime, they're a little bit too dark. Um, but this is my, my leaf, of, leaf suit of choice. Now, you may not be able to get hold of this, as I just said, so you may be looking at a different leaf suit. There are a lot of different ones on the market. Um, and you can pick them up from China. Now, a Jack Pike suit, you're looking at around £100, but you can pick up cheap leaf suits from China. And they're, they're pretty good. The colours are, are pretty good, and they're a really good base for crafting. But you may need to um, change the colour slightly. For, um, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how I change colour by looking at this suit here. This is a real tree suit, and you can see it's a very pale colour, almost like this real tree here. It's, it's, it is real tree, and it's got this kind of very pale look. Now, if you're in Europe or in your in the the UK, this colour is too light. It's too bright. So if you use a suit like this, you want to darken it up a little bit. You can see here, this is the same same pattern. You can see it is a maybe the camera's not picking up. It's a little bit darker and a little bit more usable. Now. How you would change the color on these suits, um, you, there's two ways you can do it. You can either use an ink, an acrylic ink, or you use a brown spray paint and you dust it over it. And that allows you to get um, the Chinese suits or a lighter real tree color suit matching your environment a little bit better. So what you want to do is get your leaf suit out into the areas you're going to be playing in and perhaps use uh, Krylon paint or an acrylic paint or an acrylic ink in a spray bottle. And you can use these to change the color and the shade of your leaf suit to match the environment. Once you've got that basics of the color 
right, you can then go on to craft it a little bit. And now I'm going to show you some of the techniques. Um, well, actually, it's probably most of the techniques, to be honest, of how I apply um, garnish to my suit. So let's take a look at some of the basic materials. And we can actually do this really cheaply. And I'm going to show you how we can do this cheaply. What you need to do, you need to get hold of some cheap um, artificial leaves. You can pick these up on eBay. They're, they're really, really cheap to get hold of. And they're kind of plasticky. Search like artificial maple leaf, artificial autumn leaves. There's also some different color ones here, larger ones. In and of themselves, you can see they're, they are not a very usable color. They're too bright, they're not very natural. So to get these to the stage that we can use them, which is, let's see, well, I've got some kicking around. Let's see, I've got bags and bags of this stuff. Um, I've got one almost finished here. You can see the difference between a, where they gone? You can see the difference. So these were the same leaf. And you can see how this one is looking much more natural. This one still actually hasn't quite finished. This is how they start. We're going to get them to this stage and then we're going to apply them. How do you get to that stage? Well, the first thing you need to do is get rid of the crunchiness. They have a real crunchy, nasty, plasticky feel. Now, to do that, what you need to do, you need to wash them in a washing machine. But you don't use detergent. You put them in the washing machine only with fabric conditioner. Tumble them up in, the, in, a, in a really hot wash. Um, with just fabric conditioner. You don't have to be expensive. Get some really cheap fabric conditioner from the corner shop or your, your local supermarket. The cheapest you can, put a load of it in, that softens it up. Once the long, hot wash has finished, you then put them inside a tumble dryer. I would advise, don't put them in individually. I would put them inside a laundry bag. You know the sort of thing your, your wife or your mum might put her knickers in or your socks in and you put them in a tumble dryer and it keeps them all together. Put your leaves inside, not a plastic bag, inside a laundry bag, tumble them up, um, dry them. Now that, that motion and that heat in the tumble dryer of constant turning and tumbling will soften them up and make them a really, really soft uh, and it gets rid of the crunchiness of the leaf. Another thing you could try doing as well with the plastic leaves um, is getting the leaves, put them in a the bowl with vinegar, soak them in the vinegar, and that vinegar can break it down and um, make them much, much softer. Now, how do you get into this natural colour? Well, since they've gone through the washing machine and they've gone through the tumble dryer, um, you, um, you then need to, they, they will lose a little bit of colour and then you need to reapply the colour. And we, what we're going to use, we're going to use acrylic ink. This is like an olivey color, but you need to find an earth brown color. Um, what you then do is you put your softened leaves into a plastic bag and you use about one part of the brown earth ink, acrylic ink. Don't use acrylic paint. It's got to be acrylic ink. And you use acrylic ink with uh, water and you put your leaves in a plastic bag, scrunch them all up in the water and the ink, take them out and dry them. And they come out looking, after they've dried, looking like this. And um, then we move on to the final stage of how to craft them. And to finish off the craft on these artificial leaves to get them looking really natural, we're gonna need a candle and we're gonna need a lighter and we're gonna light that candle. I'm gonna show you how to do this. And you can do quite a few of these at once. I'm gonna light this candle. And then I'm gonna show you guys how we apply it. So what you can do, you get a few of these leaves together, you take your candle, and you singe the edges, blow them out like this. You do the edges and it creates that kind of rotting look to them. And the final thing you do to be able to attach them to our suit is we'll put them together. We're gonna to fold them in half like this. And we are going to burn them, burn a small hole through the middle. And then we've got a hole through the middle. That hole is going to allow us to attach the leaves. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. Okay, the next thing we're going to need to begin attaching our leaves to our 
leaf suit and to build up that depth, we're going to have to have a couple of ways of attaching it. I like to use this. This is my favorite material for crafting suits. This is raffia. You can pick this up dirt cheap and you can buy it in huge bundles. And then once you once you get it, you can pick it up. You can get it pre-dyed, but I like to get it in its natural, very light color form and put it into bunches like this. And you can see it's got a brown tint to it. I then use brown, uh, brown camouflage paint and I will dust the raffia with the brown paint and it creates this um, very, very natural looking dead grassy material. And then we're going to use the individual strands like this to attach these leaves to our suits. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm sure I've got loads of questions coming in here, guys. Gabrielle from California. How you doing, mate? Good to see you. Um, uh, no uses. Where's the best place to get suits? Um, eBay, Amazon, or um, Skirm Shop. In if you're European, Skirm Shop has some really um, good suits. They've got both the Jack Pies and they've got cheaper alternative suits. They've got a suit called an MFH suit, which is um, it's a it's a cheaper brand, but the colours are absolutely spot on. So take a look at Skirm Shop for those suits. Just going to check these colours. Southport says the Kabilis leaf suits are amazing. Well, actually, mate, that's this suit here that I, I brought out initially, this real tree suit, that's the Kabilis suit. And I agree, the quality on those suits is very high. And if you can get one in a good uh, camouflage car, take a look at those. Um, Evil from Vancouver in Canada. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Um, cool. Good to see all you guys in here. Okay. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask away. Um, I'm happy to answer anything on um, on leaf crafting so let's go and attach some of these leaves to a suit and we'll see how it turns out we're going to you first we'll use the raffia technique to attach the suits i'm actually going to use i've got a throw here that i want to craft myself i use this for when i'm stealth camping and let's see if i can angle this camera so you guys can see a little bit about how i'm going to attach this um, what I need, I think on this on this mesh, I'm going to use I'm going to use a little. Well, there's, there's two. You can either attach it directly to the mesh, um, or the problem with attaching it directly to the mesh is it, it can tear. It can. I'm going to use a sharp knife. You've got to be a little bit careful not to rip a big hole in it. I'll literally just put two two holes with this knife. Then you take your raffia, which we've already crafted. Then we take those holes. We're going to literally thread. Now this is hand. Now this is this is hand tying these suits. I am a great proponent of hand tying. I think the end results are much nicer, but it is time consuming. So to do an entire suit by hand is time consuming, but I think the results are worth it. But once I've shown you this, I'm actually going to move on. I'm going to show you a little cheat about how, if you want to do it more quickly. I'm going to show you some techniques about how to apply this stuff really quickly. So we use, tie the raffia in a knot. We don't want to have it too long, but I'm going to leave enough there. So this looks like dead twigs, dead, um, dead ferns with the leaf on there like that. And yeah, that's how I attach those individual um, individual leaves. Now let's show you a little cheat that I've got here. I did this for a long time, hand tying. I then discovered one of these. This is a bole needle or boule needle. I believe these are used, I think fishermen might use them, maybe or crafting of some sort. There's different sizes you can get. What you want to do is get the smallest bole needle you can get if you can find one of these. Let's see if we can see this here. See, it's got a little hook on the end. Now, what this allows you to do, what this allows you to do is to take your mesh leaf suit and you push the bottom needle through the mesh like that. You then take your raffia, you hook your raffia onto the bolo needle and put it through. 
Uh, Southpaw's asking, what brand is this Bole needle? I'm not sure, mate. I'm really not sure. It just says Bole needle. I don't know what brand it is. And I just literally pulled through a loop. Uh, Crazy Reaction is asking, mate, do you think getting the Mark 23 for 135 pounds is worth it for a beginner? Yes, I do. I believe, so I've just pulled it through, looped it through, and then I'll take one of these leads. I believe the Mark 23 pistol is the best airsoft sniper gun. Um, it's obviously not a rifle, but I believe it is the best airsoft sniper gun. And I think you've got excellent range, and it if you have the right technique, it can be very, very effective. I went all the way to Norway, um, and all I used when I was in Norway was the Mark 23 pistol against uh, a Milsim. So that shows you what it's capable. So there's two techniques. Use a knife and put it through by hand. Use a bole needle. And now I'm going to show you another really cheeky technique. This is called a micro tagger. Now this is very similar to what they use in shops to attach price tags or to labels. And it's got, and if you search one, I think you just search a micro tagger. Now be careful because there are some slightly bigger ones. You want to get the really small one. Um, I've had this one for quite a while. It's actually called a micro, micro stitch two by Avery Denison. Um, I don't know whether this is the best, uh, whether it's crap, um, the needles tend to break every so often, so it's obviously not that good, um, but it's quite effective. And here's how you use this. You take, let's angle this camera down again. You've got your suit here. And you attach it. You don't, you can attach it to the mesh, but it's more effective to attach these to the leaves. And what you do, um, Crazy Reaction is asking, thanks, what sniper do you recommend? Bearing in mind, I'm on a £300 budget. Is that £300 total, mate, or is that... 300 pounds for just the sniper. Um, so we're gonna take one of our artificial crafted leaves. This one, I'm I'm not too happy. I think that looks a little bit artificial. So what I might do is get the candle and just singe the edges. Be a little bit careful, obviously, when you're doing this because you can, um, now you can see how it gets a little bit more natural. There we go. Just singe those. Now, let's take the micro tagger. We're going to take one of the leaves off our leaf suit. We're just going to put that there. And you just put the micro tagger through, click, and it's attached. Just like that. Um, let's take another leaf, show you how easy it is. Micro tagger, leaf suit, artificial leaf, micro tagger through, click, leaf attached. Now, this isn't pixel. Yeah, mate, I'll show you my ghillie in a second, dude. I'll show you my pixel, my, um, show you my suit in a second. This isn't the most robust way of attaching them. If you do this, these leaves attached with a micro tagger, they will get pulled off. They will come off. But remember, these, are, these, these leaves we're making for next to nothing. Taking a little bit of time, um, but you can make hundreds and hundreds of these leaves for less than ten pounds. Um, so for me, if you are with this as the seasons evolve, as we go into autumn, I will when the leaves fall afresh, um, I will put a bunch of these on using the micro tagger, knowing that this season is only going to last a number of weeks before the actual leaves in nature start to rot down and disappear. Um, so they're the three techniques. There is one more piece of material that we're going to use for attaching leaves. This is the antithesis of the micro tagger. This is the strongest uh, method of attaching leaves. And there are specific leaves I will use this next method for. Now, what I'm going to use is micro cable ties, micro cable ties. You can pick these up again. Get the brown ones if you can. They are really, really cheap. Now, why, when do I use these? I use these when I want to attach a more valuable item. Now, that might be something called sneaky leaves. Now, let me pull out some sneaky leaves. Sneaky leaves, you can, these are probably, um, these are probably one of the secrets to what gives my suit so much depth. Now, 
Um, I'll get to these questions in a minute. Phobane, I'll get to that question about pine forest in just a second, mate. Where is a fresh sneaky leaf that I'm looking forward to show you guys? I want to show you the difference. That's not a fresh one. Aha, there's some fresh ones, right. So when you get sneaky leaves, they come in packs. And why are they so good? Because they're on stalks like this. Now you can, you could make your own, but using, um, there is a technique in the Snipe Pops group where people are making their own leaves. The, but these, you can buy these. These come from, um, they're an American company. They're, they're quite tricky to get hold of, but I know Skirm Shop do have some stock of them, and they're, I think, they're about 20 euros for a packet of 50. And the reason they're great, let me show you, is when you attach these, and you attach them to your leaf suit, when they sit on your leaf suit and they're attached, they, they stick out and they add masses of depth. And here's my, here's my webbing, and you can see. This is my ghillie suit webbing. And you can see, this is this is set up for summer really. Here, see the sneaky leaves. They're attached with cable ties, these micro cable ties. And they're literally just zipped on, zip tied on there. And you can see how they leap out, they fly out. Whereas you can see, I've got more, more the flatter leaves, like the crafted leaves or the artificial leaves that I've, I showed you earlier. They're kind of stuck on and they sit flat, whereas these sneaky leaves give masses of depth and they create um, what I think is one of the secrets to my uh, suits looking so good and blending so well. Now, with a with a sneaky leaf, because they are quite valuable, you're looking at 20 euros for a pack of 50. I will use the cable ties and I will attach them. And you can put them through if they've got a little hole in the middle here. So I'll put the cable tie through the hole there, or I'll put it around just the stem. If you put it around the stem and this side sits flatter, that one sticks out more. Or if you put it through the hole in the middle, they kind of flop around a bit more. And um, have a play with those. When you get them, they are quite a bright color. So to dull them down, this one's, a, this one's probably a year, maybe two years old. It might not have been on the suit for a while. Um, to get them looking more natural, like they are on my webbing here, to get them looking really natural. You can give them a very, very light dusting with this stuff again, the Krylon, or a very, again, a very light touch of this brown acrylic ink in a spray bottle. But what is probably the most natural way is actually to use mud. Now, when I get my autumn suit, I've not worn my autumn suit yet this season let's pull it out here it is this is my autumn winter leaf suit with the sneaky leaves on there most of these leaves the colors of them are actually from mud um so when i put my when i go to a site i find muddy puddles and i literally dunk this suit in the muddy puddles like you would with a more traditional leaf suit and these sneaky leaves are excellent at absorbing the mud and dirt, and it gives them this really natural color, natural look to them. Um, so that is how I'm using those techniques. And um, what else do we want to have a look at? One other way. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit once I've checked your questions. I'm going to talk a little bit about my webbing and my head because we've looked at the leaf suit there and how you can craft it, the, the techniques of how you can add depth to it, add um, your artificial leaves to it to make it start to look more natural and change your suit um, as the seasons change. But I actually think webbing and your hat and headgear is more important than your actual leaf suit. And I'm going to show you what I use to create a it's similar techniques, but it's a little bit different and it's a slightly different way of attaching this stuff. So I'm just going to check these questions and I'm going to get on to um, the, the webbing and how I do that. Crazy Reaction has just asked, can you get a leaf suit for under £50? You certainly can. You certainly can. Um, I know, I don't know whether you guys watch Clean Shot, who has craft himself a really nice leaf suit 
his his base suit is cheaper than 50 pounds i think he's about 30 quid or something um and his is based on a chinese mandrake suit with that sort of snakeskin um camo so yeah you can most definitely um get a suit for less than 50 euros um adam's asking where am i playing next i might be having a weekend off this weekend and next weekend i've got a milsim in the uk um as, as a S J I H T says have a look on ebay for cheap chinese leaf suits and yeah this is this is the great thing about crafting suits you don't have to spend a huge amount of money um you really can play my style of airsoft on a on a budget you can get a leaf suit for under 50 quid you can get a leaf suit for 30 pounds like literally you can import it from china for less than 30 quid you can get hold of these leaves you can get hundreds of them i think this bag here of leaves which I haven't crafted yet, and I'm going to. These are really big leaves. I'm, by the time I wash these, craft them, colour them, this bag cost me like a fiver, I think, um, including postage. You get a bottle of ink. You can get these inks for like three quid or something. Um, so you, And then you, you put it, you can, look, if you're cheeky, you can nick your mum's conditioner, put it through the washing machine, um, use the tumble dryer, put it up in a bag, and you're looking at, less. get some raffia, get some of this raffia. Um, you don't, if you get, I think these bolle needles, if you want to do, use these to speed things up, you're looking, I think this is about seven or eight quid. I can't remember. So yeah, man, for like 50, 60 quid, you can start to craft yourself quite a reasonable leaf suit. Um, maybe looking at 70 quid if you want to get hold of some, uh, but even brown paint, yeah, maybe 60, 70 quid. Then you can get a, um, get a Mark 23 pistol and for less than, 250 to 300 quid you can be um having a very similar loadout to what i believe is the the basics of my 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 suit and my play style and what makes me an effective airsoft sniper which is a silent pistol good quality concealment um and the rifle is an extra the rifle is a luxury you don't actually need a rifle if you look at some of my recent videos when i was in norway i went for an entire two-day mil sim with just using a pistol um, it's possible to do, guys. It is possible to do. So let's go and check some of these questions before I have a look at my webbing. John um, says, what do you think of Webtex vests? Actually, I've got a Webtex. Well, I've not, it's not a Webtex vest. Um, I've got the Webtex vests are based on a British Army version. I was going to come on to this um, when I finish do it, looking at Leafsuit. I've got one here. And if I've got time... Um, and you guys are still with me and you're not all bored to death. I'll talk a little bit about this Webtech suit at the end. Um, scroll these questions. Uh, Evil is asking, he sees I use mesh eye protection. Um, he gets vertigo with them. So I've not heard of that. Um, I've heard of vertigo. I've not heard people get vertigo. And he's not happy with the reflection from his goggles. Any suggestions to uh, minimize reflection and not reduce visibility? So you said you can't use mesh eye pro, so you've got to use glasses. Have you seen, there's like stickers you can get over the top of the glasses. They're kind of like, um, I've forgotten what they're called. I know Skirm Shop have got them in stock. Um, I can't remember what they're called, mate, but there are stickers you can get. I've seen Sniper, um, Nobridge's uh, friend, uh, Fabby, has some on the front of his glasses. It's worth having a look at. Um, Fran says, how can I get a sponsor for Airsoft? Uh, not sure, my friend. Not sure. Um, Lilvik, where can you get a scope cam like mine? I tell you what, Lilvik, those sort of questions. I'm gonna today. I'm gonna stick to gilly crafting questions. If you want to know about the scope cam, ask me. I put a, a community post up. Just click on my profile. Click on community. I'm gonna do a uh, a podcast recorded tomorrow, and I can have a look at all those kind of questions. Um, in that, Pixel says, can you show us a suit? I'm gonna get onto the suit in just a moment. Um, Craig says that he loves clean shot. Do I know where he got the his suit from? Um, from from eBay, I believe. Um, I think they're pretty easy. Search Mandrake or Snake Camo Leaf Suit. It's pretty cool. Um, and again, Blood Fight. I will answer that MK23 mag question in the podcast. I'm going to record tomorrow. If you could just stick that question down on my community post, I will get to that. Um, our folks says Pine Forest suggestions, please. Pine Forest is tricky, mate. Um, you've got to go pale, and I think. I think with pine forest, you've got to use more traditional Hessian suits. Leaf suits are okay, or you've got to use lots of raffia, um, but definitely, um, definitely you've got to 
leaf suits, you've got to think there aren't that many leaves in pine forest. So you've got to think a little bit more bland, maybe a cloak or maybe a scrim net, something like that. Uh, South wants to see my goggles close up. Sure can, mate. Here are my goggles. I'm going to get, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about these goggles after I've had a look at the webbing, because for me, the webbing is probably the most important part. I'm going to talk to you about how I craft it. So this is not a leaf suit. This is not a ghillie suit. This is my webbing, and I wear this no matter where I'm playing, pretty much. Very rarely do I not play this. I sometimes don't wear this when I'm doing like CQB or Urban. But the inside of it, you can see, this is US Army webbing. US Army webbing, super cheap to pick up. It's actually one of the very first things I bought when I airsoft. I think, I don't know the exact specifications, but I know it was made in the 90s. And I believe it's the same webbing that Bruce Willis wears in the film Tears of the Sun. Now, why is this important to me as a, as a ghillie suit wearer? Or, well, I'm not wearing a ghillie suit, I'm just wearing this. By just wearing camo, if you're just wearing camo, like I've just got a simple shirt on here. And with this webbing, you can see when I pull this on and attach it, it has got straight away, it creates this amazing depth to it. So just click this on here, it's very, very comfortable. I'm not wearing a ghillie suit, but you can see how this now starts to break up my outline. It allows me to add natural veg and I'm going to show you how I craft this webbing. On the back of it, on the back of it, I have got a camelback. Now it is attached, it is attached pretty securely. I'm not going to take it off, but this is, if you can see there, this is a camelback. It's a British Army camelback, but any camelback would do. I think it's a desert camo. Um, it has a removable bladder in there. It's made by Camelback and it allows me to carry hydration for really long games. Um, and on the back of it here, this is the back of this Camelback on the back of my webbing. I've got, you can see I've, I've applied um, the, the, the 3D leaf techniques I showed you earlier on the suit. I put scrimnet around it. I've put a webbing of paracord, which allows me to stuff natural veg in. And then I use um torn up old leaf suits i use uh, artificial green leaves sneaky leaves um leaves like this that i picked up from uh craft shops but these are actually going to come off as we move into the autumn and that is mostly used to stuff natural veg in which creates when i lie down it just allows me to blend in to the environment i can put any veg in here in norway recently i stuffed it full of moss which allowed me to blend in to um, the, the environment allows me to adapt on the field and you can see here I've got a cross draw holster this is where my mark 23 goes and let me show you how I attach all this material because obviously it's not tied on I use some whoops my camera's just gone for a burst and I use something called shugu uh, SF nation hello Graham good to see you uh, Graham asks, James, you're running that webbing all year round and changing colours depending on the time of the year or changing the webbing leaf suit? Good question, Graham. I tend to wear, um, this webbing is pretty much the same stuff all year round. It's got like a green base to it. It's kind of got like a green US Army, um, I think it's US Army woodland uh, colour to it. Um, and then the backpack and the, and the artificial leaves I will change depending on the time of season. But to add the depth and to create this, like here, you can barely see the straps. And to attach that, I use this shoe goo. And I will then stick on strips of either things like, this is an old, this is an old leaf suit. This is an old leaf suit that's been ripped and torn and shredded. Oh, you, you can use this. But what you can, or if you haven't got a leaf suit, what you can search for, here's a tip, guys. Search for um, pigeon hides or hunting hides, you know, that sort of netting that the hunters use to set up their shotgun hides to shoot the pigeons and the crows. It's very, very similar to this material. Jack Pike make it, and they use, this is from a Jack Pike suit. I believe Jack Pike have got leftover um, stock of their old suits, and if you buy a Jack Pike suit, 
um, a Jack Pike hide. It's of a very, very similar color to this. Look at those guys. It's cheap to pick up. You then use that and you use shoe goo, which is used for shoe repairs. It's super strong and flexible. And you dab it on and you stick it on your suit and you wrap around the wrap around that mesh. That then creates some depth. You can then, once you've got that mesh on there, you can then use your cable ties or you can use your raffia. You can see the raffia here. You can tie your raffia around and you can tie onto it leaves. And this is, these are all tied onto that mesh, which is shoe gooed on. Um, you can use like art the leaves. Again, if you buy this pigeon hide, you can get these leaves and you build it up and you apply it and you get it to, it takes some practice, but you get it to match the environment you're going to be playing in as closely as possible. Here's something else I've got here. Let's have a close up of that. That is artificial turf. That's the kind of stuff you can pick up in garden centers. When you're looking around garden centers, take a look for artificial veg. Um, a garden leaf, garland leaves, anything you can you can find that is looks realistic. Some of this stuff is not some of the stuff you can pick up. Here's uh this is a this is a hood of mine. Move this camera back again. This is a this is a cobra hood. Someone asked questions about a cobra hood earlier. This is a, a cobra hood that I attached to that webbing. It's got this is a this is actually a, a more traditional ghillie hood. It's got Velcro. I'll then attach that to my webbing. I'll attach that to the webbing and it turns my webbing into a hooded concealment system. Um, and I think I think I've told you pretty much all of my basic techniques and there isn't really any more secrets to my leaf suit building. This is pretty much it, guys. Raffia, um, mesh from either pigeon hides or old leaf suits, um, a, a leaf suit base, webbing, which you then use shugu to stick this stuff to. Or on the leaf suit, you then use the raffia to tie the leaves to. Um, sneaky leaves are the sort of luxury item that you can attach with micro cable ties. And you can use these techniques on your goggles. This is a pair of Hero Shark goggles. You buy these, and all I've done is take that mesh material. There's a video on my YouTube which shows me crafting these. You take this mesh material, you then shoe goo it to the outside of the goggles, and then you use that mesh to tie the raffia to it using the bolle needle to help thread it or even do it by hand. Here's something, here's something unusual. Some of you may have noticed that before. Feathers. That's a pheasant feather. There's another pheasant feather there. Pheasant feathers are great. If you can find feathers when you're out walking, again, I love feathers. They're cheap. Not just cheap, they're free. Um, they're very lightweight. They are flexible and waterproof. And they actually provide protection. Where those feathers are in front of my face, that provides protection from BBs from smashing my teeth out. And I just attach those using the mesh that I've stuck on and maybe some of these artificial lightly concealment system from a, from a suit. And then I will then use shoe goo. Those, those feathers are just attached using shoe goo. There is a video that shows me crafting one of these masks from start to finish. Um, guys, honestly, that is pretty much all of the techniques I use. It's not complicated. But when you apply this, it's not just a case of throwing it on. You Only you know the environment you're going to be playing in. You need to have a look at and be honest with yourself. It's going to take you a few times. It takes practice. You can put stuff on. It doesn't look right or it doesn't look natural. You then have to take it off again um, and start again. You've got to be honest. It's not just a case of taking a new leaf suit, tying as much of this stuff on as possible. That's not how it works because that's not that's not natural you've got to look at the environment there's, there's when you're looking around in the environment you're playing in there's often bare patches or wood don't turn yourself in just a big blob of artificial leaves you've got to try and find spaces so let me show you um my suit uh, i'm going to chuck it on now so let's take a look at my suit once i've chucked it on where is my autumn suit and there's one more technique i'm going to show you actually about how to attach here we go. Here's my awesome suit. I've not worn this yet this year. Let's chuck this on. Oh, 
hopefully my headphones will not fall out. There's the microphone. And we'll put on, see in and of itself, I mean, it's good, but it's once you then put the webbing on, for me, crafting your webbing is really important. The webbing is such an important part. And a good leaf suit on its own is great, but I love wearing this webbing over the top of it. Not only does it, not only does the webbing um, work more effectively over the leaf suit, it gives you the pouches. Um, the belt allows me to add more pouches depending on the type of game I'm playing. buckles see these straps I've got all kinds of pouches on here and you can adapt this webbing depending on the kind of game you're playing okay, let's tie it on. and I'm going to show you once this webbing's on as well what this allows you to do with these straps just on here rather than a plate carrier it's got one strap here one strap here and the belt I can then stuff natural veggie in those. Literally, I can get ferns or any kind of environment I'm playing in, stuff that in the front. These traditional suits you wear, traditional cloaks, they don't cover your front. But in airsoft um, and sniper, as a sniper, we're not lying down all the time. We're not hiding. We have to move around. So to be able to stuff natural veg in the front of your suit and stalk standing up or to sit back on an object, and, and blend in by sitting back on something and still maintain perception of the area while sitting up and having all this camo on the front of you. That's something that um, traditional suits don't have. The other thing I'm going to have, I almost forgot about on these suits, elastic bands. Elastic bands. I, these are just, again, this is, we can be cheap here, guys. This, this, this webbing I'm wearing, it's, I can't remember what, I paid like 15 or 20 pounds for it. It's so, so cheap. Um, you pick it up for next to nothing. Elastic bands. I nick these off the postman when he comes. Put them on your limbs. That allows you to stuff natural veg in. You, I've got three elastic bands on each arm. You can put them on your legs as well. Um, natural veg in the area, guys. And with it being in your arms, it allows you to very easily just grab natural veg, stuff it in. I can also do that with my hat. Where is my hat? Look after your hat. Um, here it is. This is my this is my new boonie hat. This is a boonie hat which has got my GoPro on it. My GoPro straps on the outside. Using the same techniques again, attaching mesh, using raffia, using raffia here to tie artificial leaves. And then the GoPro strap allows me to stuff natural veg into this hat. If you watch my recent Norway video, I, when the, I shot the guy in the balls when I was lying down, he was like a foot away from me. I had masses of moss stuffed in here. And I was just laying down in the, in the mossy environment. Um, yeah, so natural veg is not just about having um, artificial veg. You can have the ability to add natural veg as well to it so let's check out these questions guys before i um shoot off oh yeah, evil's talking about these fake marijuana see uh, sit leaves we've seen those they look great they do look really good and um, let's try to rubber bad mate this is this is this is cheap it's like beyond cheap a lot of this stuff you, you can play this is one of the reasons i love this style of play you don't have to spend much money you can get an asg mark 23 for 40 40 pounds, $40, $30, really cheap. And then you put on a few upgrades. You put the Hadron Design TDC dust cover um, and you do a few, you mod the nub and you do that cheaply and you can buy yourself a decent, decent heavy BBs, um, whether that's my 0.48 gram BBs or whatever heavy BBs you can get hold of. And then you can be using that Mark 23 pistol, hitting people at a really long range. Um, quietly with a leaf suit that you can pick up cheaply. You can do the mods to the leaf suit cheaply. Um, everything, if you want to, you can play it on, on a, or you can do this game on a budget. And you can do things like I travelled to Norway, did a milsim, 
on what is effectively a budget, just using a Mark 23 pistol. Um, see there any these questions. Um, Rick's asked if there's anyone on Amazon looking to sneak leads. Take a look, mate. Take a look on Amazon. It might be there. Um, uh, Eric is asking how I dress my gun. Same techniques, mate. All of these techniques. Here's my SRS. All of these techniques that I've used here and I've shown you on this suit, they're applied everywhere. Look, there's the buttstock. This is taking shugu. That's camo tape. That's, that's painted. And I attach mesh, which then allows me to tie raffia and the odd bit of that artificial veg here and here. Same techniques, whether it's here, 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 it's all the same technique. Very, very simple. But what isn't simple, this, here's my camera. Same technique on the camera. You can see here, we talk about these leaves. Those leaves I used earlier. Exactly the same technique, burnt, singed, tied onto the mesh. Everywhere is the same technique. A little bit of artificial turf. Once you practice this stuff, once you practice these techniques and um, you start to try it on your suit, on your webbing, then you can get confident enough to start doing it on more expensive pieces of equipment. Um, but that's this, my SRS. And that's how it's, uh, I don't put so much concealment on the inside because it's normally held here. But you can see how, that's moss. That's another thing. What you can do with this shugu is get natural moss. Literally go out to a tree, go to the woods, fine natural moss like this dry it take it home put it on a radiator dry it then it's going to take quite a lot of sugar because the moss soaks it but you literally put the sugar on there and you stick the moss on that that's been on there now a year so uh, that's why it's faded a little bit when it fades it looks like wood you know it doesn't weigh much it just looks like wood um so that's my gun all the same techniques guys i mean i told you at the start it's not, this stuff isn't complicated. It's, um, it's just, uh, it's, I suppose it's the same as, as, as you could, artists would say, well, this is how I paint a picture. It's not, it's not complicated. Um, but actually applying those techniques takes practice. And that's what you're gonna have to do, guys. The great thing is it's not expensive, so you can practice, get creative, just try different things. Um, if you get it wrong, tear it up. Start again. It's not a, it's not a big problem. Uh, Josh is saying Mark twenty three for forty quid. Where uh, the ASG ones, mate, or the, the clones? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, kicking Mustang equals hell on the battlefield. Yeah, <laughs> tell me. Um, so showing the uh, Alab Wasp version two release. Not sure, dude. I'm not sure, my friend. Um, I think there was a VSR one um, coming out. I've got the SR. I've got the Wasp piston in my SRS, pretty good. Um, I, tried the, I tried a prototype in my VSR. I wasn't massively impressed with the prototype I had in my VSR, but this SRS one is obviously good, really good. Um, I almost don't want people to know about it, it's that good. Um, uh, Grimishaw asked, would you be able to add leaf age to a ghillie suit that already has artificial? Yeah, mate, definitely. But what you want to be careful of, what you want to be careful of, don't, you don't like here. I mean, I don't really can see, like, I've got patches. I've got leaves there, but I've always got patches. When, when, you, when you go out and you see, when you look, look at what you want to do, Grimshaw, look at the area you're playing in. Look at the ground and the environment. You've, you've, it's not just a case of building what you think looks good. You've got to build something that matches your environment. We had a question earlier about pine forests. You've, you need to know your environment. You need to know what the ground is like. I, I try to create a forest floor look. Um, if you are playing something like a pine forest, the forest floor tends to be a bit more bland. Um, if you're playing somewhere like a, and like a Norwegian forest, it's incredibly green and mossy. Um, so you've got to have that in mind. Know the environment. It's not it's like when you're drawing a picture of a person. If you draw a picture of someone, it's not just about, well, that looks like a person. It's got to look like that person. That might look like a good goodie suit, but if it doesn't match your environment, 
it's not going to work. So this is where awareness comes into it. You've got to get aware of your environment you're play, playing in. Um, Dawson asked, where can I get one of those webbings? Just eBay, mate. Search US Army webbing, ni- webbing 1990s. It's like, it's really basic webbing. But I'm not, this webbing I'm using is not necessarily the best either. I'm just, this is just something I've got. I've, I've always used it and I've always kind of used it. There's probably better webbing out there, to be honest. Um, if it was the best, the US Army would probably still be using it. They're not. Um, I like it. Um, let's check in these questions. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Uh, Shirai says, though I cheated and used surplus from ex-military equipment in UK, I sell jet bike and web techs. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at that. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. There's a few questions. I'm going to take a quick look at this um, web techs. Um, Daniel just asked about SSG24. Mate, if this, this is a ghillie crafting live stream. If you've got questions about anything else, tomorrow I'm going to be recording a podcast. Let's get the web, web text out. Tomorrow I'm going to be recording a podcast and um, any questions like that, you want to know what I think of SSG24, you want to know what I think of um, who my favourite football team is, uh, what I do for a living, anything like that at all. You want to ask me anything, ask me in the community post I put up. Um, click on my profile, click community post, I think it is, and just leave your questions under there and I will address them in a uh, podcast I'll be recording tomorrow. So I had a question about a web text suit. What do I think about them? I like them. I think they're good. Now, what I've got here, this is what the WebTech suit was based on. This is actually the British Army. Now, the WebTech suits are used by the British Army. This is the original one. These are quite tricky to find. I went to um, a show called War and Peace in the UK, and there's one of these up for sale for 150 quid, I think it was. Um, But essentially, it is a WebTech suit. Now, what it is, you can see here, it is a, well, these ones are green. They are available in other colours. This is green. Um, and you wear it like a cloak. It's got loads of elastic on. This one has got incredibly strong elastic, very, very strong um, for adding natural veg. Now, what surprises people, I, I often, I have often worn this in videos, and there's very little hessian on it. A lot of people, when they make ghillie suits or more traditional ghillie suits, they'll put loads of fluffy hessian on and make themselves look like a yeti. For me, what is that? phones running low on power um for me i wear very little hessian on it and then i use these these loops to just stuff it with loads of natural veg in the environment i think they're great um in at the right time of year in the summer they get too hot um winter time you may not want to have loads of natural veg because obviously winter time i think leaf suits are better um because there's not much natural veg but in this time of year where we are now maybe September, October time, when there's still ferns or dying ferns, or there's still greener, you can't see out the window, there's still greenery on the leaves. A web tech suit stuffed is very effective, or springtime even, when the natural veg is starting to pop up. But in the height of summer, I tend to avoid them because they are um, incredibly hot. Got a few questions coming in here from France. Unfortunately, guys, I cannot speak French. Parlez-vous français? I do not. Um... Mr. Brown says, why don't you use the webbing technique on your Mark 23? What, the camo? Because it needs to be holstered, basically, because I holster it. Um, And if it's got all that camo on, it's difficult to holster it. Um, Eric says, best small silencer for the Mark 23. Uh, Peter Zaki from the Sniper Ops, he does 3D printing. He's probably got the best one. Um, But good luck getting out of him, getting one out of him. He's, uh, I'm not sure where he sells them, to be honest, but he's got one that's pretty special. Um, but again, questions like that, guys, ask me in my podcast. Um, South Fork, American Forest is streaming. In. Well, here's something I see before I sign off. Here's another, here's one more piece of actually, I probably lost it. I'm not going to do that because it's over there somewhere. So, guys, listen, um, Ravi asks, How do I camo my face? Uh, that's a good question. I wear a balaclava, and my balaclavas. I haven't got one here, but I wear a balaclava, mate. I wear a balaclava, and I wear goggles, and I wear a hat. Um, Ajab, the, sound, the podcast is going to be on SoundCloud. SoundCloud soundcloud.com forward slash kicking Mustang. And there's two episodes on there already. Um, gloves the same there. I've got leafy gloves, but it depends on the time of year. In the winter, I've got like seal skin gloves. 
Um, I haven't got the seal skin gloves here in front of me, and I actually haven't got my ghillie gloves either. Um, in the summer, I wear lightweight, like real tree gloves, um, and I use the same techniques. They've got leaves on them as well. Um, but guys, listen, um, my phone's almost out of batteries. It's been awesome. I'm. Um, it's amazing to have so many of you in here. Um, when am I going to play in Holland? I'm thinking I might be passing through Holland in the next few weeks, but I'm probably not going to play. Uh, where's the tally boot? <coughs> tally boots are in the boot of my car. Uh, love the tally boots. Um, but I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to love you. I'm going to leave you um, with what I hand on my heart. I believe I've given you pretty much all of my secrets of how I craft. Um, not secrets. These are techniques. These are techniques. If you want to know more about ghillie crafting, um, you want to perhaps chat to other people who are crafting suits. If, you, if you're new to crafting, um, I can suggest joining my sniper ops group. Uh, send a request in there. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash sniper operations, all one word. Um, if you can't find it, send me a DM or send me an email or send me a DM on Facebook or Instagram and I will get you in there. It's a really great community of um, ghillie crafting and people sharing techniques and um, just uh, yeah, sharing their journey in crafting and stalking and playing this really sneaky way of airsoft. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. Um, I really appreciate uh, all your time you spend in here and I will catch up with you all soon. Have a great afternoon and uh, have a great weekend of airsoft wherever you are playing.